my friends. So this is Ali Dose of Inspiration. This is Ali Tawishi with you. And today we have a special guest, Larry Normel. He is a billionaire mindset coach. He is have an elite big tattoo uh, studio and he turned his life from being this street to success. He play with money like from millionaire and now he's chasing the billionaire. So without further ado, my friend Larry Normel, please welcome to hey, Ali Podcast. It's an honor to be here, buddy. It's an honor to be here. Thanks for having me. The honor is mine, my friend. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Guess. So I'll give you a little breakdown of me. Basically, I was born in 1979. I was raised in an interracial relationship. My, my father was a black man. It's the man I call father to this day, the man that raised me. Uh, growing up, I didn't really know what racism was, right? I dealt with a little bit of racism. I dealt with a lot of racism growing up. And when I was 10, that's when I learned what racism was. I had to deal with the fact that my dad and I were at the ice house chipping ice off an of ice block to put it in the cooler to go to work. And this guy came up and was getting upset that my dad kept calling me. I kept calling my dad, dad. And he was like, why are you calling that man dad? And then they started fighting, arguing back and forth. And the man came after me and told me he was going to take me where I belong. And my dad and him got into a fight. And then my dad stabbed him with an ice pick. Oh, really? So that was wow. the day I had to learn about, yeah, that's the day I had to learn about, um, well, the next day, actually, because they, they arrested him, but they dropped the charges in the middle of the night. And when I woke up in the morning, he was home. So, you know, that was a blessing. And when he got home, he, he had told me, he was like, listen, man, he broke down what racism was. And still at that time, I didn't really understand all of it. I was only 10. But what I took from it was what he always said was, you know, people were – People are, um, are not born to hate. They're, they're taught to hate. You know what I mean? But if they're mm -hmm. taught to hate, they can be learned to love. So, like, we would always use that in everything we did. No matter who we talked to, whoever we were around, we always showed them the same respect they showed us. We never did anybody different. You know, a, a skin tone is not who the person is. The soul is who the person is. So that's what I look at. So growing up, my mom was, you know, heavy. Like, she was a hardworking woman and just her dedication and kept me where I am today with my heart on my sleeve because, you know, through all the racism and stuff, she still stuck to what she didn't listen to nobody else's opinion. She stuck behind her guns and stayed with my father, even though she knew it was causing all kinds of issues, even in our family life. Mm -hmm. But that's what, that's the one thing I can take from my mom is I love that part about her is that she's just, you know, holds that to dear to her. Mm -hmm. And with my father, he was more of like a structured businessman. He was trying to create successful businesses and, you know, with hard work and dedication, he used to always say it to me and always just five o'clock in the morning, I'd get up on in the summertime and I'd go work with him every, every day. It sucked, but I knew going to work with him that the knowledge I would get would help me. Right. So mm -hmm. we'd go to work and uh, at that time, I didn't really understand what he was doing, but now I do. He wrapped my brain around success. It was just teaching me to be successful. Right. So at 16 though, he passed away. So when he had passed away, I kind of got lost, man. I didn't have that father figure I needed. And then instead of me trying to be there for my mom and helping my mom, I kind of went into a dark space and I ended up leaving home, was homeless for a while, ended up getting into drugs and alcohol and just started doing the wrong things. And I ended up in jail. So I ended at up in jail. Of, at, is that at the age of 16? Huh? No, at 18. Well, I was in, yeah, I was in jail at 17. I went to a Ferris, a detention center for kids. And then I ended up in a foster home. And mm -hmm. then from there I went into a prison for three years. So I was locked up for a, long, a lot of, a long time as my childhood. And at 21, when I got out of jail, a little, almost 22, I got out of jail. I, uh, while I was in jail, the guy Richard was like, both of my cellmates were in there for murder. And they were kind of like a redemption with me. They were kept telling me, Richard would be like, listen, you got to set some goals, man. You got to get yourself together. You got to figure out what it is you're going to do with your life. And he was like, I need you to just keep telling me, man, we need to talk about this. I want to help you. I want to help you get back out and get right. Mm -hmm. So we ended up talking and, and I set two goals. And while I was in jail, I set a goal of, owning a tattoo shop and taking care of my mother. Now at the time, I didn't even know how to tattoo. I was still tattooing with needle and thread and an old tattoo, handmade tattoo machine. So when I got out of jail, I didn't, I can't say I went right after my goals because that would be a lie. I went back into the streets and started doing things I shouldn't have done and was just doing things that I knew that was not right. That would have mm -hmm. led me back. So I ended up moving back down to Dover and into a slower paced area to where mm -hmm. I can get my mind wrapped back around what I needed to. And I started driving truck. Well, at that time, I started working at a bike shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
I, I was trying to get a tattoo shop. I was trying to get in. I was tattooing out of the house. I really didn't know what I was doing, but I knew I was going to get my goal. Like nothing mm-hmm. was stopping me from that. So I got in there and it, I couldn't get into any t- tattoo studios because there was only a few open at the time. Well, at that time, that's when drugs was getting bad with like oxycodone and all that stuff. So like there was a lot of addictions and in the mm-hmm. tattoo industry back then, that was really heavy in the industry it was drugs. So the artists that were there at that time ended up, you know, leaving because of that. And I ended up walking in one day and they just needed an artist and they hired me. So that's wow. how I ended up getting into the industry. It was by far luck. It was mm-hmm. nothing else but God's faith of giving me an opportunity and giving me the option to get in, right? Mm-hmm. So I was in there for about a year and the owner ended up showing me her true colors. And I ended up taking a leap of faith and opening up my own tattoo studio. Wow. And at the time, the, the crazy part is I was re- I could have done it if I would have had, I should have put more knowledge. I should have went and got a mentor somewhere. I should have use that i should have used like somebody around me that was business minded to teach me business because i didn't know it and at that time i thought i did but after a year of being open i ended up i ended up my shop got robbed they ended up taking all my stuff i was working a second job at night repoing cars because i needed money extra money to pay the bills mm-hmm. and in that time my wife ended up started cheating on me with my best friend i lost my house i lost my business oh. i lost everything i ended up becoming a single father I ended up having to move in with my mother to, to just be able to pay my bills again, just so I can get myself back right again. So I went through like it's deep depression, the state of that, but I never let it deter me from going towards my goal. So I went back to work for Pioneer Concrete and I started driving a concrete truck and I was working there for a while and I saved up enough money and I had enough money to open up another studio. So I did. That time I was opening up for about three years. That shop did great. We were doing pretty good numbers. It wasn't like the best numbers we could have done, but it was good numbers. I could have lived off of that, you know? I knew how old, that I uh, could how old are you, Larry, at that, at that time? At that time, I was 25. 25, okay. 25, 26, you know? My son was born. Uh, he was, yeah, he had about 25, 26. He was doing, we were doing good, where everything's going great. And next thing you know, uh, the owner sells the building. He oh. sells the building, <laughs> and the guy that buys it, ends up wanting to remodel the whole building, but he wants everybody out to do it. I went back and forth with him. Like, I'm not leaving. I have a lease. I'm not leaving. I'm not, I can't afford to leave. I'm not leaving. Because at that time, that was before social media and all this. You're talking 15, 16 years ago when social Mm -hmm. media wasn't what it is now, right? So the only way I knew really to get my name out there was go to the local clubs, go to the local everything and just hang out with people and get people to know me. Mm -hmm. But in doing that, I was spending every dollar I had to do it. Cause I had a showboat. Like I was trying to always impress people for no reason. <laughs> so I ended up doing all that, spending all that money. And then, uh, when, he, when he wanted me out, what he did was he went and cut the bathroom wall out of the bathroom in the, in the shop. Doesn't say anything to me, but then calls the board of health and has them come in and inspect my shop. Cause he complained. Wow. So I didn't think anything of it. Me and my son are sitting there. We're eating breakfast that morning on the counter and then the health inspector comes in. He's like, hey, uh, we got to do an inspection on your shop. I'm like, all right, no, deal, no big deal. Let's go. We go to the bathroom and I open that door and the whole wall was ripped out. And you can see the apartment behind my studio. Wow. So I'm like, come on, man, don't do this to me. I can't shut down. I don't have the money to afford it. Like, I just got this new house. I don't have, I just got my credit back, right? Like, I'm finally working in the right direction. Please don't do that to me. Well, one thing led to another. He said, I have to shut you down. So I ended up getting shut down again. So this time, like, now I'm like, I got this son, that's just me and him, I have an apartment that I'm living, or a house that I'm living in with a few roommates, and we're doing good, you know, and all of a sudden, it was like, reality kicked in. So I was still tattooing out of my house. How old your, your son, Larry, if you don't mind, at that time? When, when, uh, at that time, he was six, five. Six years old? Yeah, he's wow. grown now, he's, he's, he's about to be 18, so we're talking some time ago. Okay. But he, uh, we, we ended up going through a lot of that, and uh I was going through some depression and I never told anybody but my two best friends, Pharrell and Brad. I would talk to them all the time about being, you know, what was going on in my head. I was so down and out, broke, but I never showed it to the outside world. So one day I ended up meeting another woman and, you know, she was trying to help me get myself right. My mindset still was in the gutter and I was like 100% not what I wanted. I knew better. I shouldn't have done, but I did. I got with her. We ended up having a kid and getting married. So, while, while we're in the middle, she's having a kid. I'm working for this, this gym, this local gym down here, Gold's Gym. And uh, I was operations manager, but I wanted to still get back into opening a tattoo studio. And I couldn't, I couldn't do it because I just didn't have the money yet, right? Because I was mm-hmm. still trying to 
create my credit back again, build up my savings, mm-hmm. get myself back together. And in the mix of all that, I ended up, a friend of mine was like, hey, man, they're, op- they're closing the store down and moving it. That place out there on the highway is open. Now, mine's just like prime location where I'm at. It's like the hub spot. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I'm going to go try it. So I go up there. I only have $500 in the savings account oh. <laughs> and $42 negative bank account because I just paid my rent and I didn't get paid yet. So I was broke. And I went up there. I talked to them and they kind of they agreed with me to, to let me do it. I was like, I want to open a tattoo studio. They were like, great. I like the idea. The concept sounds cool, blah, blah, blah. So I ended up getting up with a guy that was a local business around here and he was going to invest with me and help me open up the studio and we were going to be partners. So we had that all set up. The day that the lease comes, it was October 2018 or 2008. And he comes, we go to sign a lease. He doesn't show up. <laughs> so I'm like looking at the owners like, man, what am I going to do? I said, listen, after 45 minutes of just conversation of, of nothingness, I was like, look, I got to reschedule this with you. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. I want to make sure he's okay, blah, blah, blah. Three weeks goes by and I'm steady negotiating. I'm driving up to their house all the time. I finally, I've written this $500 checkout and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to shoot my shot. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to give it a try. I took a $500 check up to him and said, I'm going to give you this good, it's a good faith check. I want to give you this $500 check. And if I don't have the money come January 1st, when I'm allowed to move into the building because the tenant is moving out and that's when I get ownership of the building, I will 100% just let you have that $500 check and let you know I don't have the money to build the shop. Wow. So they agreed. They agreed. They gave me three months rent free so I wouldn't have to pay till March. So through all that, I get home, I'm driving home and now I'm freaking out because I'm like, man, I just gave them my last $500 (laughs) and I don't even have the money. I'm borrowed 20 bucks to get up here. So I was like, I got home and I had a laptop sitting around that my buddy gave me. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to throw this thing on Craigslist. At that time, Craigslist was like the big thing. That was the selling platform before Facebook and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. So I got on there and I was going crazy with Craigslist. I was buying and selling stuff left and right. I sold that computer, flipped that and got a Civic. And I bought the Civic and I got a set of rims off my buddy for a hundred bucks. He said I can pay him after I got the car sold. So I cleaned the car up, put the rims on it, sold the car, doubled my money. And I ended up just keep doing that until the point where I was like getting the money to not only build my shop, but I was buying like show cars and show bikes and make, like selling them and making like five, six thousand dollars. Whoa. So I ended up making enough money to open my shop, you know, by just getting on Craigslist, buying and selling stuff. So right right before the shop started to open, I pretty much sold everything I had and dumped every dollar. I even sold the car I had. I didn't even have a car at the time. I'm riding a 10 speed bike. So the day before we get to open, Greg comes in, which is a head inspector for the city of Dover. He walks in, he goes, uh, is that wall over there? Now, mind you, he's done came in about 10 other times and already failed me for all these other things. And I had to get through all those huddles, right? That's mm-hmm. why I was broke because I literally had to spend every di- last dollar I had. He looks at the wall over there. As soon as you walk in, he said, is there a door used to be there? I said, listen, man, I don't know. I didn't put that. I, all I did was paint that wall. I did nothing to that wall besides put paint on it. He goes over with a screwdriver, pokes a hole in, and you can see the shop next door. He said, Larry, I got to fire it. I got to fail you because... This needs to be a four-hour firewall between a service to a retail. And since it's not, you cannot open. It's not operational. Oh, my God. So I'm looking at him. I'm like, dude, I don't even have a dollar in my name, man. I really physically don't. I don't have any money. I said, I don't have the money to get this. Can you at least let me open? And within the next 30 days, I promise you, I'll get it done. Well, at that time, it was 2008 when a recession was hitting. We had a whole bunch of things happen here in Dover with a big building that went in and got condemned. And the city, you know, got a lot of wrath from it. So we dealt with a whole bunch of things going through that. So he was like, I can't do it, Larry. There's just no way I can do it. So needless to say, I had to call the landlord and was like, listen, Harold, Chris, I don't know what to tell you, but I don't, I can't, I can't open the shop. I failed. He's like, Larry, you didn't fail. Go ahead and do it. And I'm gonna pay for it. So needless to say, 30 days go by. Finally, we get the shop open, right? The blessing in all of that was my first year, I made the most money that year. I made $197,000 first year in wow. three. And I, I didn't even open up until March. Most money I ever made hands to that day. I've made more now, but in, in that, when I first opened out my first, first year, I made that much money. It was that crazy. I did it all on my own and I didn't even know how I was going to do it, you know? And here I am now after I have the shop open, everything's going great. Three years of being open. I'd finally told my wife at that time, I was like, listen, 
uh, I, this isn't working between us. Like your goals and my goals, what you want and what I want. And what I'm working towards and what you're working towards is completely different polar opposites. And we cannot come together in any way, shape or form with any understanding. And I'm sorry I dragged this out, but I just can't do it anymore. I thought it was going to go a lot better and it did. It didn't. We ended up going through a long custody battle, divorce court. Man, it was just hectic. I was getting beat up left and right. Wow. And then all of a sudden, to make it even worse, my artist that I had working for me at the time quit. Well, two of them, one of them I had to fire because of some stuff. The other one left with him. And then I had one quit because he was actually sleeping with my ex-wife at the time and ended up marrying her. He's married her now. He was like my brother, my best friend, the dude that was in my wedding. I'd have killed for that dude. Wow. When he was down and out and in his luck, I was the one that was there for him. And that's how he treated me. So like to this day, I, I still don't claim him as an enemy, right? He just lost the privilege to call me a friend. That's all. You, you, still, not you, still, you still keep the relationship with him? Yeah, I have to because I have a daughter. You're right? strong. And, man. You're strong. Well, I have man, a daughter right? and we co-parent. And at, the, at this time, you got to look at it like this, right? I don't care about him. I care about my daughter and I want to see my daughter That's, raised the right way, yeah. right? So as long as he's raising my daughter the right way, he's treating her right and she's living the way she's supposed to be there. And her mom's a great mom. She's not like she's not a bad mom. She's a really good mom. So it's nothing against her. It's just we both were in the wrong path. We were both in our wrong paths. That's all. But as far That's as a, him, a, re a rejection in term of redirection, my friend. Yeah. And with her, with him, he just like, he's not a bad dude, like in the aspects of being a stepfather and all that. He does his due diligence with that. So I respect it. But that's all he gets out of me. As a friendship, it just can't be there because I could never trust him. And with my friends, if you're my friend, I call you my friend. I trust you with my life. Like you should trust me with yours. Exactly. Well, exactly. That's just how I feel. So in, in all that, now I have hand trained every artist that I have with me, except for one artist, even the piercer. I trained her. And over the since I've done that over the years, now that I've, I make millions of dollars over just wow. training people. So what I've, what I've come to know and realize in my life is that few things I'm great at, and that's mindsets, changing mindsets, getting people to where they need to be. And there's not much about a tattoo industry you can't tell me. I've been in this industry over 20-some years now, and I know it like the back of my hand. And one thing I love to do is train people and teach people how they do it. And that's what the billionaire mindset coaching is for. It's for, like, young entrepreneurs and stuff. No, you know, it's not just for tattoo artists. It's for young entrepreneurs trying to do things, mm -hmm. trying to start a new business or – big corporations that just need to help change the mindsets of some coworkers, right? Because I know in, in my mind now where I'm at is big corporations to even little corporations like myself, right? I step outside of my work more than I work inside of my work now, right? And I own multiple businesses. So I'm not in all of them all the time, but everybody that works for me and knows me knows 100% I have their back like they have my back. That's what has to be known in the industries. And that's what's, that's what's missed in a lot. You go to a Walmart, the associates of Walmart don't think anything. They don't think about, okay, Walmart really loves me. The owner actually does care about me. They don't realize he owns 10,000 stores. It's not like he can just come into one, right? But there needs to be an appreciation shown in other ways. It doesn't have to be about money. It has to be about showing the showing it, you know, bonuses, doing something with them. Like we get tax write-offs. We have to write money off. It's not like you can keep all the money. Something has to be worked. So give back, give back to the communities, give back to your employees, man, you can build it into a family. And that's what it's about for me. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And that's why I think I'm successful. Amazing, my friend, your story, just like, give me goosebumps, my friend. It's like, holy, Thank you. just like fall after fall, fall up as every time you put your head above the water, someone yeah. can just push you down. And you just like, as long as you get like a little bit enough, you get your bread in and it just, it puts you to get some more bread. Someone push you down. It just, but I like what you got to do is you got to learn your lesson, man. You got to learn the lesson. God. It. Trust God. And it's. Oh, it's, yep. Trust God and chill. Chill. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my, my philosophy of life too. Just leave it in, 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 in God's yeah. hand. And even, even everyone is against you and God with you. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah. Don't you don't have to worry because and you got to have a group of people around you, man. You need to have people around you that 100%. Mm -hmm. have the mindsets you know exactly and what what i like about your story larry it's just like you focus on two things when you were in the jail when you were like 16 you had it in your mind that you want to open your studio and you want to help your mom so mm -hmm. those two things were engraved in your mind and you were like your your, your dose of aspiration your dose to keep you going to keep you like even with eyes closed and you say you know what i want it for my mom 
that significance, that value, that's just like something that's like have no price at all because your mom is your everything. And a lot of people just want money, money, but that's probably what keep you moving. You want and let me tell you about my goals that I set 20 some years ago while I was in jail. Mm. So since them goals now, I own artistic edition tattoos, which is trending all over the world. I have videos out there that are trending a million and a half views. I have had, we have in a collective whole, my team and I all have people that travel from all over the world to come get tattooed by us. Wow. I am turning my show. I'm, I am starting a TV series now coming out soon. I'm working with a big name producer that's working with me right now. We're working on the, actually tonight at 11, I have an interview or meeting with him. But uh, we're in the middle of that. I have also bought and paid off all my mom's bills this year during COVID. March, March of 2020, I bought my mom's house and paid all her debt off. High five, my and friend. Modeled her house. High five. That's just like it. Just that's I am. I, I am a big family guy, and and my family, I would put them on my head. It's I just right. never gave up, man. I never gave up on myself, and I think like our biggest issue in life is, and this is this goes for me because I was in depression, like. I told you the quick story of my life. There's mm -hmm. so much inside of that story that people can get out of me. I've lived a hundred lives and can pretty much relate with anybody on some stuff I've been through and went through and, and still going through, you know? And, but what I can tell you is this is I've never given up on myself. I don't believe in failure. All I believe is, is success. I don't think you can fail. I think you can just learn a lesson. Mm -hmm. And if that lesson makes you any stronger and that's who I am because I didn't even graduate high school, man. I got, I didn't even, I went to, uh, few weeks in ninth grade and that was it really I yeah i didn't really do anything man i was so adamant on just i was i was so lost as a young kid you know that i, I think i dealt with enough darkness that the lightness once it started to show i knew i never wanted to go back and now all i see is like even through a failure i like i look at it and i'm like all right i learned i bet you it won't happen again you know so mm -hmm. And that comes with a lot of things. That's why when people come to me now and they're like, can I get some money? No, I can help you in another way. Yeah, I have enough knowledge in here to help you understand how you can do it yourself. You don't so you need to develop the muscle. You develop you the have muscle. To. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because last year I ended up investing in a uh, building company, construction company and a development and ended up losing a lot of money and almost, almost it trickled into my marriage. My wife ended up starting to get mad at me. Uh, she didn't, she, and I lost some trust in my wife over that situation because I didn't tell her everything. So I realized, you know, that's not who I am. That's not what I want to be. That's not how I want to live my life. So I had to cut all ties knowing that if I cut these ties right now, I'm going to lose a lot of money. And I did. But you know what? It wasn't over the money. It, it, I should have never thought about it in the money state of form, right? Because I don't worry about my industry, anything else. I don't worry about my tattoo industry, about money. I, I worry about the art, right? And that's why I'm successful. And in this world, I feel like we worry more about money than we do anything else when really our happiness should be the first. If you can work on yourself first, everything else comes forward. And, and what I would love to give out to anybody listening is if you're going to be an entrepreneur and you want to make it happen, get a mentor, find a program, work a program, and make sure it's your passion. Don't pick a job or a career or anything off of just wanting to do it because Business is hard. Business is a a twelve round boxing match all the whole time. Even when you think you're doing great and you're winning that fight, next thing you know, a left hook come in and uppercut, and you're done for the day. So you can't you can't expect and want something and not be willing to give it up, right? So passion holds you from the point of when you're ready to give up on it all. Mm -hmm. It's still in your heart and it's your passion. And it's what you love. But if it's just there because of the money. You can walk away from that and go somewhere else because you know it's just about money. Mm -hmm. I love that. And it's, it is, Larry, that's just like, which show that a lot of people will think they are successful, but they are not fulfilled. But a success without a fulfillment is a major failure. Yes. Because you always feel there is a gap, there is a hole inside of you that is not fulfilled. Yeah. And probably what keeps you going, uh, Larry, is, is the passion, the passion for the art. It wasn't mostly the money. The money was part of it, but the passion for the art that probably what keep you going. And now my passion is I'm doing a documentary now. We just did two podcasts today and a challenge. And I have a film crew around me almost all day on becoming a billionaire. Because what I'm doing now is 
I don't really care about the money part of this. It's not even over the money. I know it sounds like people are like a billionaire. Yeah, why not? You can be whatever you want to be in life. As long as you believe it and know it and ask for it, receive it, it's going to come. True. You just got to work towards it. You can't be shy. Like I don't sleep, man. I work. I'll sleep when I'm time to sleep. When I hit the billionaire, then I'll sleep. But right now I'm working, right? So my thing is, is I'm going to be a billionaire. I'm going to show people how to do it. And the reason why I'm doing it isn't to, to boast about having a billion dollars because most likely I'm probably going to give most of it away because who the hell needs a million? Who needs a billion dollars? Like I can help change the world with that money. If anything else, that's all I can do with it. So that's what I'm going to do with that money, right? But what I want to do with it is to prove to that kid, that little Larry, that little teenage Larry, that adult Larry that was going through something that didn't know how to get out of it or even think they could get out of it. Cause there was a lot of times in my life. I just thought I never was going to get out of that. I never thought I was going to get out of jail and be anything. I, at the very beginning, when I first went in, I was like, screw it. I'm just, this is what I'm going to be. I love like, to be honest with you, I know this sounds crazy, but I didn't have a bad time in jail. I didn't have that horrible experience. A lot of people will tell you they had, I didn't, I had two roommates that were like, cool as hell with me. We played spades a lot. We gambled a lot. We played checkers and chess and read mm -hmm. books, man. That's all we did. So like realistically, while my friends were out in the streets using drugs now, because that became a thing, I'm in here sharpening my brain, getting myself focused more, you know? So like realistically, that's why I believe it helped me. So what, I, what I'm hoping out of me and me getting on all these podcasts and talking to people is more of just to show people that like man, I don't care where you've been. I don't care if you've been a drug addict, an alcoholic, a gambler, because we've been, I've been at all. You can ask my old employees. So I used to, I told you right before we got on this podcast, I would sit hours in the casino, hours, brother. If I didn't show up, they knew I wasn't coming. They knew I was up because I would make money. Shoot my wife that I'm with now, ask her our first two dates. You know where I took her? The casino, <laughs> the casino, brother, on two first dates. But she was my lucky charm. I mean, not I paid. I made ninety seven hundred dollars the first two dollars I went out with her. Ninety seven one night. Ninety seven hundred fifty nine thousand seven hundred fifty dollars the first night. Forty four thousand seven hundred fifty the next night, because she kept taking the money. Because you know a gambler, we can't. You can't see the money because you're gonna put it up. I'm gonna start betting a thousand instead of five hundred, right? So I took in. I would uh. I I, I would take the um. I would take the money, she would take the money and put it in her pocket so I wouldn't see it. So she kept doing that. So I would only gamble like 100 or 200 at a time. So she, we, I made good, but that was bad. That was so bad because those were only two good nights. I can tell you 100 other bad nights I had, you know, where I've lost the money. I didn't have the mortgage payments. I had to figure out how to get that mortgage payments. There was a lot of things that I don't. Oh, yeah. I know how yeah. it is, my so, friend. It is. <laughs> it that's why like I said chasing, I'm just, chasing the loss. That's what it is. I'm, chasing yes. The loss. I've lost, that's why I said I've lived a hundred lives, man, and can pretty much relate to a lot of people because I've done a lot of things that I, it's not that I'm not proud of them because I'm not proud of them, but I've learned a lesson from them. So it just made me a better teacher for the next person to teach them, listen, you think you're doing great, but let's really add that up. Because I would always boast about the money I made, never talked about the money I lost, you know? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's that's just like the story. It's just like it's amazing, so powerful. It's just like giving hope to people that you were struggling, like through gambling, through addiction, through being in the street, and they, they know they can do it. They know they can make yeah. it through life as long as there is determination, as long as there is passion, as long as there is a vision that they can see. And if and you don't have somebody around you, like if you don't have somebody around you, get with somebody. Get with a mentor. Find a program. Like. Les Brown has a program. John Tallarico has a program. Everybody, everybody find a program that works for you, that a program that is geared towards your liking, what you are into. Like Grant Cardone has one, ET has one. Everybody has a, a program, right? And there's a lot of other people too. Trust me, there's a million and one. But when you find that program that works for you, get with it. And it might cost you, but I can tell you this much. That $500,000 you might have to spend to do it, could be the thing that changes your life because I did a program. I did a program with John Tellerico. It's the thinking into results program. And I tell you what, I did that program. And since I've done that program, I'm now going to be on TV because of that program. Wow. Yeah. So when I tell you that I'm not telling you to do it because I believe that you should do it just because. No, no, I understand. I, I believe in mentor, mentor, having a mentor and having. Yeah. You're in a program, right? You're in a, are you, you're in the Les Brown program, right? Yeah, I'm a list brown for Yeah. So you know that. You already understand how powerful that is. 
-hmm. I just was on his Les Brown Power Summit. So that was a that was a gift. That was a blessing in a disguise. You know, out of all the people, the first 20 are the ones that were the hungry, right? And now it's the next hunt, next 20 are gonna be the hungry ones. Like, cause it now we motivated you guys to move up and get your level. Cause exactly. that's all I think to do that is you got to get that program right, get your story in and make sure it's ready. If it's ready, he's got you. So I'm oh. waiting all of you guys on yours next because you know we're the alumni so we're the originators mm -hmm. so well now it started start pouring like blessing from the sky it start pouring in my life but as, as i, I said see. that's what we're here for we're to inspire each other brother exactly. like i want to see your story. Mm -hmm. it's all about like being authentic it's being true true to yourself and focus on service and significance and when we yes. focus on that my friend definitely we will reach the top and definitely we will impact and empower other people. And I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see your uh, summit because you'll be doing one soon. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. I appreciate the word of encouragement and uh, I will rock that stage, definitely. Uh, to wrap it up, my friend, we have two minutes. Uh, your story, I would like to have a long, more conversation with you, but uh, I have another thing coming up. Share with me, my friend, uh, something to wrap it up and leave the audience uh, Something so what I would say is this, is anybody that's, now I only work, I hand pick my people. I don't just take anybody in because I believe that passion has to be there hundred percent. But if you're wanting to, any help or any guidance, anything, hit the billionaire mindset at coach up, coaching.com up and uh, shoot me a message and let's talk. Let's see what you got going on. If you want to see my platform on the tattoo shop, it's artistic additions with an S tattoo.com. You can go on there and check that one out. Or you could just Google my name, Larry Normile, N-O-R-M-I-L-E. If you Google my name, I'm all over Google. Definitely. It's not hard to find me. I will share that at the end of this uh, podcast. And uh, when I put it on my, uh, on my channel, YouTube, I will add all your information and you can check you out. Thank you very much for joining Ali Dose of Inspiration. It was my privilege. It was my honor. And they learned so much. You make me almost cry. Give me chill. It's just mm -hmm. trust God. That's all you have to do in this. Well, thank, thank you, you brother. And I hope you have a blessed day. Thank you very much, my friend.